and welcome to E! Magazine. I'm your host, Brendan Emichaba. Now, the demand for animated entertainment has expanded with an increase in broadcasting hours as well as the growing popularity of the internet. Even though the global market has openly accepted and accommodated this market, the Kenyan industry has yet to tap into the potential the industry can provide for the economy. Today's show will give us an insight in what exactly animation industry in Kenya is all about and if it's making money. Now, joining me in Metropole Studios is Jake, who is an animator in the Kenyan industry right now. Welcome to Metropole Studios, Jake. Yeah, thank you for thank having me. Thank you for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for hosting Now, yeah. knowing for a fact animation has been picking up in the recent years, and mm -hmm. it's something a lot of people are doing. And there's so many schools for it. It's become like a, a, a full-time career for a lot of people. Yeah, but true. for a fact, one thing people don't understand is what exactly is the job of an animator? Uh, it mostly involves creating a world for people to see on the digital platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, it starts from maybe creating a character, whether it, depending on the, what can I say, like they are, like maybe I can start from the different forms of animations. Okay, from the different forms, okay. There are 2D animations, 3D animations, stop motions, mm -hmm. and for each of them there's a whole different techni as technical aspects okay. of okay. going to them like, uh, for stop motion, you have to start with maybe an actual model, which uh -huh. you have to move in small, small frames, or 2D, which involves like drawing the character, then converting it to a digital form. Then there's 3D, uh -huh. which involves like a full use of computer generated. Uh, so so you, you draw characters, then you turn them into uh, digital formats. Digital formats. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. All right. So, how does uh, one get into this industry in the animation? Uh, well, luckily right now with this century, there's the internet and there's obviously, like you've said, there are so many schools out there which are offering yeah. animation courses. So from, from my own personal experience, I first went to a college in, in town, in Nairobi, which mm -hmm. taught me the basics of how to use the software. And of course, I had an artistic background. Okay, so what was your artistic background? Uh, well, I used to draw. And calligraphy I'm a, or? Uh, yeah, calligraphy, tattoos. Um, I've done some graffiti, I've mm -hmm. tried the matatu industry, which is a big boom. The, in paint, the paint spraying or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so from, from those different um, experiences, mm -hmm. I got to learn a few things on what to implement on the digital platform, that is the animation mm -hmm. yeah. So having that um, you know, artistic background, mm -hmm. what made you come to decide that I want to get into the animation industry? Because I mean, you had tried you know, doing um, graffiti for my tattoos yeah. and that's a, actually a big business in Kenya right now yeah, it's it is, making it is. millions yeah, so true. how come you decided I want to do animation instead well uh, animation is unlike maybe a graffiti or a, it's more of a, like a still image which is not something just moving okay. if you're animation a, it's more fun you get to give something more life characters yeah. they can talk like this dance like this or do pretty much mm -hmm. give them a life that's pretty much it and it's moving. That's something which is very impressive for me. Okay. And I wanted to get into that deeply. Yeah. Mm. So you've mentioned that there are different types of animations. There's two D. There's three D. Yeah. But are there like different types of areas within animation one can specialize in? Ah uh, yes, of course. Like, um, um, like in any like any live shot, like even this particular scene we are. There's these two of us, which are the two characters. Uh huh. There's the backgrounds. Yes. There is the. Um, Texture is the colors that you have to use for a okay. particular theme. Sounds like algebra. Yeah, it's quite <laughs> deep once you actually get started yeah. doing it. And of course, there's a the sound, like you're actually talking, so there has to be also a sound department. Mm -hmm. So there are very many things you can dive into mm -hmm. once you uh, dive into animations. Yeah. Take an example yourself. Mm -hmm. What do you specialize in animations? Uh, well, from my experience, being like uh, a solo <laughs> journey in a, in a way, because uh -huh. Uh, where I started in, not a lot of people were interested into animation, so yeah. like it was, I had to try it out, especially making money mm -hmm. on my own. I had to go and pitch or show the client what you can do, and which involved like you have to do everything on your own. On your own, you have to create your own portfolio by yourself. Yes, exactly. Uh huh. So I want I want to know about more about your work, like the different companies you've worked for, mm. the different projects you've done with them. Uh, what do they involve? Um. So. 
Well, when I started off, I started doing free projects. Free projects, yeah. So okay. I started off with my cousin. He was a uh, was a guy who, who deals mostly with IT, like fixing computers and whatnot. Yeah. So I did an advert for him too. He can he has like created this character of him. He's okay. fixing a laptop. And then there's some information saying there like, hey, I can you can contact me on this number, etc. Then there's some voiceover. Then from there, that was my first client. From there, he sent it out to his friends. And from there, I was contacted by a college in Vika. Okay. They, wa they wanted something done like that, that they wanted to use for their Facebook. Something similar. Yeah, exactly. So there I went and I guess I dived into a corporate product project. Mm -hmm. And from that client, I, was, I shared it along in my social media and my Facebook. Then a, a guy who was doing a music video was interested. Mm -hmm. So then I dived into the entertainment. Even music videos? Yeah, I've done wow. three music but videos. But I'm happy before. that you mentioned uh, that you dived into the corporate space mm -hmm. when it came to making animations because a lot one thing you can notice um, in Kenya is that a lot of corporate companies go for animators yeah. to as a marketing tool so you make adverts for them you make commercials for them mm -hmm. instead of using human beings yeah. yeah so why do you think why is that happening right now why are companies coming for animators to make animations rather than just getting someone to do a commercial well, um, well, technically speaking, for uh -huh. a commercial which involves actual people, uh -huh. you need like uh, someone who handles the camera, com someone who handles the lights, the sound, uh, the locations. There's um, some ways a bit more technical it's aspects. It's a lot that. of work. Yeah, yeah. Basically. For, yeah, for yeah, exactly <laughs> for, for the, the corporates. Yeah, for the rough that is the actual people, mm -hmm. like commercials. But yeah. when you're involved in like uh, maybe an anima animation studio, it has let's say a less uh, it's a bit less pricey i uh -huh. guess okay i guess from my end from the feedback i got from the clients it's less pricey it's less um labor that goes into it yeah, yeah so yeah. F using animators is an easier avenue for corporates when it comes to marketing their products yeah and also you get to deal i guess with a few less people who are doing the actual commercial or more. Mm -hmm. if it's um a live shot, maybe it might involve a lot of people and you might have some technical mm -hmm. problems with the, with the crew or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, then the other thing is like animation is quite different, obviously. Yes. It's not like you're seeing people you see every other day. You can literally create a whole different world to sell a service or sell a product, which is always, everyone I believe is always interested to see something new. Yes. Which is quite interesting to look at, so yeah. And, and how long have you been in the animation industry so far? Um, I can say for around four years. Four years? Yeah. Freelance? Freelance, yeah. And in the four years freelance, how, do you, how were you able to create a certain rate card for yourself in terms of the, the, your pricing when uh, corporates do approach you and they want you to do a certain you know, animation for a product or service or a commercial? How much do you charge and how did you come to that conclusion? Uh, well, it was from my first um, project. Your first project? My first uh, corporate project, like they literally asked me how much do you want? Because before, when you're doing like... How much do you want? And right there, you, you were just given a space to just say... Yeah, you are given the, the opportunity, <laughs> yeah. But I can't say I have a specific rate card because uh -huh. different clients have different budgets for what they want. And with that kind of budget determines whether you're going to do like um, mm -hmm. a 2D, a 3D, mm -hmm. or a mixture of both 2D and live shot. Yeah. So it's not a specific rate card. Yeah, uh, wait, what was the question? Cause I <laughs> no, I was just asking, I just wanted to know basically how much are you worth in this industry? Hmm, how much am I worth? You can just give me is it three figures, four figures. I can say maybe a million figures right now. Ma no, I want a, a specific one. A specific one? A oh. specific figure. Hmm, that's a tricky one. <laughs> or, or you can tell me about um, your very, very first project as an animator oh, and how that went. Okay, the first one I got 60,000 for. Wow. For doing like a 30 seconds. I'd, I'd 30 guess. seconds? Yeah. Animation? Yeah, it was Equivalent to 60,000? Yeah, it was used for YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. It was mostly for social media. Mm -hmm. But if you're diving into TV, it's a bit more, the price goes up. It goes higher. Yeah. So approximately to how much? Like 100 Gs or 200? Uh, from 500 Gs. Yeah. Wow, so it's clearly, clearly an industry where you can come up with really big bags. Yeah, but you have to put in work because, of course, you have to reach a certain standard which mm -hmm. can be viewed on TV. You can just go and give something which is shady. Yeah. There's a lot of... 
Yes, because when I compare the work when I first did my first animations it's, and right it's now, different. Yeah, there's a big... You grow. Yeah, exactly. So now with your four years experience in that industry, how, did you find yourself um, uh, struggling to find gigs or jobs as an animator? Yeah, yeah, I can say it that because it's... Because uh, like say four years ago, it was kind of hard convincing a client, hey, you should go for animation. Animations, they didn't understand the value of animation. Yeah, exactly. Uh, until maybe the f when Fiber broke out with the Fiber, or that is Fatboy broke up with the Fiber adverts, yeah. they started seeing like how animation like has a big impact like on, uh -huh. on selling and service or service ideas. So from, I can say to from literally from Fatboy who like almost... So he set the trend. Yeah, I can believe he <laughs> literally set the trend for, for the marketing industry, especially using animation. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. So basically what you're trying to tell me is animation was not something people really so as important as usable in, you know, any corporate industry when it comes to adverts, when it comes to commercials, until Fatboy did that um, collaboration with Fiber. Yes, yeah, true, true. So he, he opened avenues for you to get different gigs. Yeah, literally, because even when you're pitching for a client, they'll be, can you mm -hmm. do something like Fat Boy? There's always some times you're going to find that comparison. So mm -hmm. yeah, I believe he opened up the gates for, for most of the animators in Kenya. Apart from that is mostly for as uh, adverts. When yeah. it comes to films and maybe web series, they are, everyone has their own inspiration across the world, I believe, on, on, the, on the internet. Mm -hmm. And do you think like there's a, a, a high demand of animators in the Kenyan market mm. right now? It's a growing demand. I can say it's a growing demand because once in a while I find up, um, I may be involved in a project where I have very few yeah. animators and yet there's a, wa a huge workload. Mm -hmm. So I can say it's growing and I believe it's a good, uh, good career to venture in right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, another thing I want to ask you is, for the gigs you do get, um, is it 80% referrals or social media has allowed you to get clients or you just have people coming up to you? Well, most of it from people who actually know me because, and also okay, okay, like I said before, there was, I did an advert for my cousin. Okay. From there, like someone else saw the product and they're like, who did that, who did this work for you? Then like, mm -hmm. they called contact on me. And uh, once those guys shared it on their social media, another corporate uh, invited me to do some a project for them also. Mm -hmm. And then from there, so I, yeah, I can say referral works. Referral works. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you've noticed that you know animation is something that's growing in uh, in the states, especially like in the global market. Animation is a billion. Um, yeah. money maker industry where because you know we have movies we have cartoons we have video games mm -hmm. and do you think that Kenya will ever reach such a level yeah, of course where we will. have this industry that's bl contributing so much money to the economy yeah I think because I can say like we literally I guess Kenya literally takes a lot of from the yeah. from that is let's say US I'm a China or those developed countries a yes, lot when yes. it comes to what we are watching, like, even when you go to a movie shop, you're going to see yeah. a lot of content from out there. So if we dive into that and create, like, something content which is, like, so on, like, the same level, I believe yeah. it will grow exponentially. Like, uh -huh. it's, it's, I believe it has a huge potential. It has a huge potential. Yeah. And how exactly can Kenya build that potential in the animation industry? What, what are we doing wrong right now? What are we doing wrong, huh? What is you being in that in industry as an animator? Mm -hmm. What are we? What are you doing? Not you specifically, but individuals who are in that same space as you. What are we doing wrong? What's not getting us to that level already? Because we've seen the potential it's bringing in, you know, global markets, making so much money. They're selling their movies to us in this country. Um, so what are we doing wrong? Why don't we have our animation movies out there in the regional markets? Well, um, I've worked on a project which was a TV series, yeah. and I can say it's mostly the people who are the actual animators or the actual background designers or the actual people who are going to be yeah. doing the animation work who are going to be who are going to pull up the, yeah. the level because mm -hmm. we are can literally almost count up ten animators who I've known since I started animations. Wow, ten! ten. Yeah, that's those are the, that's the number and. I've gone to a couple of studios and most of them just, most people prefer to work in, um, especially when it comes to TV, they want to be handling cameras or doing lighting, doing make, there's, it's mm -hmm. a big venture also, yeah. not that I'm not, it's not, it's also, it's a big sell out there, but okay. 
for animation, not a lot of people are interested in it. I don't know why. I guess it might be something you personally want to pursue. Okay. And just go hard or go home with it. Wow. Because <laughs> I mean, it's, it's also a struggle because even for me to get where I have, it's it took time. It's taken time. Sweat before you go to the where you are right now. Yeah, I believe it's uh, it's a challenge. So it takes only a few people I know have literally made it into that platform, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, before we continue even with the conversation, let's just take a look at some of your work because I'm interested. I, I have to take a look at it, but I'm sure my viewers want to see what, what really is animation? What are we talking about right now? Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at some of Jake's work. Um, he's done with corporates as well as his own animations. <laughs> I can just imagine. <laughs> I remember when I, I remember guys at work just were like so confused. They were like, weren't you here? You How know, did you, you know, end up on NTV <laughs> speaking Swahili? <laughs> Whoa. Probably up to interact all this. Now, before we took a short commercial break, Jack Ellis Korea, who is a Kenyan animator, is with me in the studios right now as he's helping me have a clear insight of what the Kenyan animating space in Kenya is all about. Welcome back. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Now, before we even went back on a break, we were just discussing and understanding what the Kenyan animating um, industry is all about. And you mentioned to me that you are... A freelance animator, right? Yes, true. And how's your experience been so far in the Kenyan market as a freelance animator? Well, uh, well, initially it was like I said, it was a bit struggling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But over a while, I got the handle, the hack of it. Because when I started out, I was still in campus, mm -hmm. I was in I think second year. Then after I finished, then I had to register a business because like I wanted to pursue fully corporate because the corporates were like better, <laughs> better, yeah. better, better looters and. Yeah, so far, so far I can say it's, it's getting better. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Do you think Kenya accommodates, you know, um, aspiring animators like you well in terms of are there financial institutions that teach animating or just simply any courses that support animation as a career? Uh, well, yeah, this is the first college that I pursued after, after high school. It's called Shang Tao. They mm -hmm. fo purely focus on animation and film. But animation is mostly their biggest selling point. Okay. Then from there, there's, of course, there are many universities which have come up with the same course, but they haven't f but primarily focused on animation itself. Mm -hmm. It's just film in general. So okay. I can say, yeah, there's... You just it's have just that. It's just 50-50. Yeah. And did you have to go do major research for it, or it was just available? 
Well, yeah, with the first college, it was pretty much in every <laughs> magazine. But of course, I think the best place for learning animation is literally the internet. Because mm -hmm. even though I went, I went to college or went to university and learned a few things here and there, mm -hmm. like the internet has been the best teacher for me because you can always refer anytime. You can always post your work and get feedback again. Yeah. Uh, this is, you can learn pretty much almost any, any craft in animation from there. Okay. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Now I want to move on to talking about um, visual effects mm -hmm. and animation together because I know for a fact visual effects is something we, a lot of people do not even know is, if it's animation or not mm -hmm. until you actually read about it and you find <laughs> out that visual effects, if you're not, if you don't have a background of an animator. Mm -hmm. So what is the difference between visual effects and animation? Well, uh, animation is purely everything that you will go, you're going to see is going to be computer generated. Okay. Uh, but that, that is except for stop motion, because stop motion is also a form of animation also. But the rest is um, purely computer generated. There's nothing real that you're going to be seeing there. That is like it's the way It's just from the computer. It's created. Yeah. It's like imagination. Exactly. But for VFX, there's a blending of the animation and the live footage or the live mm -hmm. reality that is the real world that is. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, but it has some aspects of animations into it because some are going to, still going to need to learn some animations to dive mm -hmm. into the VFX world because they go hand in hand. Hand in hand. Yeah. And d does a lot of uh, visual effects happen in Kenyan, in Kenyan, the Kenyan space in terms of their movies and films? Does that happen here? Yeah, I believe it does, but it's so subtle. It's very subtle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's How come? Well, uh, is, it, is it like uh, costly to to invest in these um, uh, machines, or should I say, the, uh, yeah. you know, the, 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 I even forgot the term, but is it costly to invest in visual effects as compared to animation? Mm, it's pretty much more or less the same. Or it's just complicated yeah, the thing to with have like, the tools for it. Yeah, I guess, because mostly like for VFX, you see you have to blend an animated or a computer generated character or animation into mm -hmm. a live footage that is okay so there are so many technical details that you have to get into like like lighting or if you're s simulating something which is real it takes a lot of process okay. and power to generate that and you have also have to learn how to generate that thing in the first place yeah so i guess it's the technical aspect and also the that is the the skill itself from the person that is the animator or the VFX artist. Okay, okay. And of course, the machinery they're going to use because some of those renderings are just, they can, you can have like one second take up to almost like five hours. Five hours. Yeah, and it's, that is something which is so detailed, looks realistic. There are so many aspects that you can just blow So take, them for example, a movie like Avengers. I'm sure that one has a lot of visual effects, uh, right? Yeah. How long would such a movie take to render? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, I wonder because I bet you need like, to invest literally on a, on a render farm, uh -huh. not just the animators a or the farm, VFX. A render farm. Yeah, render farm. You're going to have many, many compu or computer, like a super computers just uh -huh. to hack. You're going to, you can even have a, a st or re register like a company for just rendering mm -hmm. the work itself. Because it's so, so much, like so much, it takes so much power to do that. Okay. So yeah, I can bear And these machines must be very costly. Are they even, do you, are they supported by the Kenyan economy? Are they even produced in Kenya? I honestly haven't seen one. All the movies I've seen in Kenya, they are, it's, it's very rare to see a visual effects. Maybe like shooting a gun. Nigerians have visual effects. Yeah, Nigerians do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with Kenya. Why are we not trying this? Because um, uh, every person I've seen see like a Nigerian visual effects. They, everyone laughs because it's... Yeah, it's funny. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's just not as... I cannot compare, compare a Nigerian visual effect to, you know, something like Superman or yeah. anything American or even Chinese, yeah, yeah. Hey, you China, know, movies. Holly, uh, Bollywood, they're all doing like the air game. Because who wants to try, when you watch a Nigerian clip and you're going to <laughs> laugh because you're like, wow. But we we'll still watch it. <laughs> yeah, you're still going And to they're doing it. visual effects and we're not doing it. So I don't know why the Kenyan market is afraid of that. <laughs> so between the two, which one makes th the most money? I would say animation makes more money than animation. Animation, not even visual effects? That is for me, from my experience. From your experience. I've made more money on animation than uh -huh. on the VFX, which maybe I've done for a music video, which was maybe a one-off project. Uh -huh. But for animation, I've done a lot of projects. Uh -huh. yeah. And how long, once you, how long does an animation for a music video take? Take you? It uh, depends. I've done like 
two, well, there's one which was fully animated, then there was another one which was like, it was the actual singer, and uh, blending them in with the, my animation, animation. one. Yeah, so like, the first one which was fully animated took me two months. Two months. Two months to complete. Then the other one was took a little bit. Two months is a long time. Yeah, it is. It had, mm. You know, you're always going to have that, there's that visual from the artist. Yes. I want this yes. done. Then you have to create it. It's not always going to be seamless that you're going to have exactly what they want. So it's not something that will take, um, you know, a day or two, like a graphic or something. It's not the same thing. No, nah, it's not the same. Graphics are, it's way easier to do graphics than to do <laughs> an animation. I can imagine. So clearly it's worth, I mean, if you're going to do an animation for a month, that's equivalent to yeah. a good paycheck, yeah, in true. my opinion. <laughs> yes, I believe so. Now, so. With, um, one thing I want to ask you is, uh, you being in that industry for the time you've been, mm -hmm. what are the assumptions people make about animators? Ah, yes, those are my favorite. Because you're just going to meet clients who are going to believe like, you just click an icon and then poop, and it a character happens. form have, like, yeah, they character pops They don't know the coding, out. what that goes behind it. Yeah, they have, no one has an idea, until, unless you're an animator or you've also been in the film industry also, because you know you have to manage a character, you have to handle the lighting, yeah. the sound. Like this, you literally have to create the whole world from scratch. Yeah. And it takes a long time. Like, and people are always going to have their, I want this done in this particular way. So you have to go back and change. Mm -hmm. And maybe, let's say, you've, maybe you've rendered animation. You've gone through the whole process. They're like, no, 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 no. I don't like what this character said and how they portrayed it. So you have to go wow. back. And you have to change again. something, change something here, re-record something here, and re-render all over again. So by the time you're done with that, you're just hoping they don't have any <laughs> other minor. No, I don't like this color. So you want to make like, it perfect no. from the first go? Yeah, you have to go through, at least you have to, when you're meeting the client, you have to go through at least, at least the script, the storyboard, you want this shot before you actually get into, into the actual animation. Because mm. once you dive into that, or you're, it's, it, you don't want to go back and change something else, because you might just mess up the whole project and yeah. start all over again. Yeah. Do you feel like animators are devalued in the Kenyan market? No. Apart from working with corporations, you know, large corporations like Safaricom, especially I've noticed that um, service providers are key, they're key to coming to animators to make them commercial adverts. Mm -hmm. But do you feel you guys are devalued in terms of your worth from, e you know, other companies? I don't think so. I can't say that because, mm -hmm. yes, I've met some clients who didn't think like animation was technical and also met clients who actually knew how technical it can be. Yeah. And even you're trying to pitch to them like, hey, let me offer you an image. They're like, nah, no, that's too, bit, too, bit too expensive. But I can't say it's another valid player. It always, always depends on the person you're pitching to. Because okay. there are some people who don't even know what an image, just see me just go and record it with a camera. Mm -hmm. and there are people who know that you have to go deep into it. So it varies with one, from one person to the other. OK. Yeah. And um, when you get into the anima animation scene, mm -hmm. do you find that um, you can get jobs as an animator and what kind of jobs are there for people who are animators like you go to school you get your degree mm -hmm. or you get your certificate for um, the animation course you've done mm -hmm. what kind of jobs can you get into well uh one thing i've learned once you learn animation there's there's nothing you can dive into especially in the film in the film industry because yeah. once you learn animation you learn editing you learn sound design or sound editing you learn the basic shots so you can direct something. Okay. You, this, you learn lighting. You, li you learn a lot. There's pretty much nothing you can dive into. Because before even I, like, I, I would have to do maybe an editing gig so I can have to buy, to get money maybe to support maybe another, maybe to buy my own sound stuff or buy another, an extra piece yeah. in my computer so that I can improve its performance when doing animation. So. Either you're going to learn so much by the time you're doing your first animation, you're going to have learned pretty much almost, almost most of the things in the film industry. Okay. So you can dive So you have to be, it makes you a person who's all round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Allowing you to venture into other spaces. Yeah, exactly. Now you have your own business. Yes. Is it a good idea yes, to start an animation business in Kenya? Yes, for me right now it's one of the best decisions I've made in the past. <laughs> Five years, yeah. And why is that? Okay, scratch that one. Obviously, your your own boss. That mm. can be the number one tick. What 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 other reasons make it a good idea to start an, being an your own business of animation in Kenya? Well, you're going to learn a lot. I think apart from being your own boss, you're going to learn. You learn a lot. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to almost control even the budget you're going to 
handle when you're doing the projects. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you also get to have the opportunity of meeting you know, some of the most creative people yeah. in, in the industry. I'm glad you mentioned that, actually. Yeah. Because what kind of avenues does animation open for you, uh, you know, in Kenya, in, you know, that working industry, being your own, on, being an entrepreneur? Mm. Like, what avenues do you get? Apart from being an animator, maybe it opens, you know, spaces for you to do something else. Uh, yeah, I guess. We mean, mostly... Has it done that for you? Yeah, it has, because I've been able to maybe create a, a broader network for the people who are handling, like, maybe the film industry, because I'm of, my first passion of us was obviously I'm f doing film, I'm a media in general, mm -hmm. so I guess mostly for me it's networking, mostly meeting the people, because it was another fun adventure. Itself, Great. So. Well, I'm loving our conversation, but I just want to wrap this up by asking you mm -hmm. the last question. Where do you see the Kenyan animation industry going to? Uh, right now, it's getting bigger because, first of all, there are people investing in gaming. Yes, people yes. investing in, um, in comic book arts, more adverts, more, more. There are people I know are doing movies right now. It's, okay. So I, I already know people on the ground who are already like d diving deep into the animation co like world, especially for gaming. So gaming. I, I bet is that something you're planning to enter? Uh, yeah, you can because even when you're making a game, you have to advertise that you have to maybe create the demo, demo of how it's going to look like. So yeah, it's it's something which I'm going to I'm going to dive into once maybe in a few in a few years maybe. A few but, years. But right now I want to <laughs> dive into corporate because uh -huh. or making more commercials because also. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping I'll be seeing more of your commercials on the TV. I'm so happy for you being on Metropolis Studios today to help me understand what the animation industry is all about. Thank you so much for joining me, Jake Kuria. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for hosting. Well, guys, you heard it from Jake. Animation is a no joke. It takes a lot of work and it's definitely an industry that is making a lot of money. Now, let's take a short commercial break and when we come back, we'll take a look at the gallery and see what art events are popping this weekend. Welcome back to E Magazine. Now it's time to take a look at what's happening in the art space and theatre space since this Thursday. That's our theme. Now, um, on our event diary, as you can see, the Meet and Jazz, which is a third edition, is happening this Sunday. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of jazz on a Sunday chill day. Now, another event that's happening eh, at the Alliance Francais de Nairobi is the exhibition of seven years of Afrofuturism, which is amazing because Alliance Francais never fails in showing different artistic pieces. And this starts at 6.30 p.m. Now, another event that's happening is another exhibition, Time and Other Const Constructs, that's happening on March 20th, 29th, but it's still ongoing from now on. And this is from uh, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Rel 8 Art Gall Gallery. Now that I've given you some things to do this weekend, make sure you try it out. There's nothing wrong with, you know, just checking out a little bit of art and theatre that's taking place. Now, let's take a look at what made it to our entertainment news today. Now, the final season of HBO's Game of Thrones, which premieres on Sunday, cost $15 million an episode. HBO's Game of Thrones has a hefty price tag compared to the majority of other TV shows, and it's only gotten bigger with time. Each episode of the show's eighth and final season, which debuts on Sunday, cost $50 million according to Variety. The final four episode, episodes, pardon me, are 80 minutes long each and one battle reportedly took 55 days to school. Game of Thrones is by far the most expensive series on television. Westworld, another hit by HBO series, cost 10 million shillings an episode. Netflix high budget shows like The Crown and Stranger Things cost $10 million and $8 million dollars respectively according to variety now the epic fantasy series premiered in 2011 and started out on as, as an as started out on an estimated 60 million dollars to 70 million a season according to gq which would make each episode cost at least six million dollars but for seasons 
the but four seasons for two backwater battle creators, DB West and David Benoff, pleaded for HBO to give them more money. Now moving on to the next story of today, Vampire sells 1 million copies as one dev science deal for ambition new game. Vampire, the 2018 game starring a doctor who turns into a vampire and struggles with his new bloodthirst, is a commercial success as developer. Don't Note Entertainment announced yesterday that the game has sold more than 1 million copies since its release. The game was published by Focus Home Interactive and now the two companies are renewing their publishing deal. Terms of the renewal were not disclosed, but now co-production promises to be one of the most ambitious in the history of publisher and the studio. Vampire is currently available on PS4, Xbox One and PC. It's free on Xbox One for Xbox Game Pass subs subscribers, pardon me. The game is also reportedly coming to Nintendo Switch, but a release date has not yet been announced. That brings us to the end of E! Magazine today. I'm your host, Brandon Emichaba. Join me the same time tomorrow.